Yo, 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 welcome to NBA All-Star and kind of Super Bowl edition of Hard Pass. I'm your host, Jacques Slade. This week, we've got Nike selling their own NFTs, Tom Brady's top sneaker moments, All-Star Weekend's top releases, and of course, this week's Hard Pass. But first, let's talk about the big money that the Louis Vuitton Nike Air Force One auctions brought in. The Sotheby's auction for the Louis Vuitton Nike Air Force Ones designed by the late Virgil Abloh has concluded, and according to Nice Kicks, by the way, shout out to them for breaking out the TI-82s to calculate them all, it garnered over 20 5 million in bids, with the lowest pair going for 75,000, while the highest pair went for 352,800 dollars. Remember when Sotheby's estimated that they would sell for between 5 and 20k? I do, because I thought I had a shot. And now we wait for the inevitable stupidity of someone getting their pair and taking pictures of them to sell as NFTs, which you can redeem for stuff that isn't actually the shoes. Oh, what am I saying? Who would do such a thing and think Nike or Louis Vuitton wouldn't sue their ass? Huh. Speaking of Nike, they just launched their first foray into NFT collectibles with their Mystery Box collab with Artifact. As of this recording, the going price for one is the Ethereum equivalent of $16,000 and no one knows what's inside. Boy, I sure hope it's an NFT redemption ticket that you use to redeem for a size 10 pair of basic black and white dunks. Oh, what am I saying? Who would sell a $16,000 coupon where the dumbest thing you could do was actually redeem the coupon? Acronym's latest collab with Nike has attracted a lot of attention for its modular heel clip where you can actually 3D print a custom one for your pair. Earlson Hugh, designer and co-founder of Acronym, understands the chatter behind his blazer low and that he wouldn't expect everybody to get it right away. I think he's missing the part where people are confused as to why you need a screwdriver and a 3D printer at a minimum to enjoy a sneaker. Personally, I like the custom aspect of it, especially that one with the spiky swoosh. Now, that's a shoe you can use to keep people from getting too close to you in line. Soldier Boy has a new luxury sneaker out called the Soldier Stars, and naturally, people had jokes. Personally, it's not my style, but it certainly has a lot more going for it than that bootleg Wii U he was trying to sell a few years back. Not going to remind these same people about the creative wrecks they were rocking in the late 2000s, but hey, look, we all make mistakes. Good luck, Soldier Boy. It's probably the least embarrassing product he's endorsed since Braid on Xbox 360. You about to die. People are like, oh, shit, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Props to Paige Bukers for using her NIL deal to hook up her teammates with some sneakers from NFT seller StockX. Remember when college athletes had to hide their connections and sell off their free stuff on the down low like a year ago? We're in a better place now. Whiny college football coaches be damned. So, by the time you watch this, the Super Bowl will have already ended, so congrats to the Bengals, or to the Rams, or who am I kidding? I couldn't care less since my five-time world champion San Francisco 49ers are not in it. We were so close, man. I mean, uh, uh, well, anyway, thanks for the memories, Jimmy G. Your place in the hierarchy of 49ers quarterbacks is secure. Let's see. Joe Montana is forever our number one, followed by Steve Young, Colin Kaepernick, you, Alex Smith, and Jeff Garcia is somewhere in the bottom after the garbage Mina Kimes take. Terrell Owens' favorite QB is next to such luminaries like Ken Dorsey, Sean Hill, and good old JT O'Sullivan, whoever that is. Anyways, I don't really have a rooting interest in this year's game. Like, I'm cool with The Rock's long-lost cousin in swag, Joe Burrow, winning a ring because he might put it on a chain next season. But I also wouldn't mind Odell Beckham Jr. completing his redemption tour so he can put his ring inside of a Richard Milley watch. But this isn't really about the players who are in the Super Bowl this year. It's actually about the guy who recently walked away after winning seven of those things in 22 years. Thanks for the memories, Tom Brady. You know, ever since Brady won his seventh championship last year, a lot of pundits have taken to calling him the GOAT of team sport GOATs, surpassing Michael Jordan. And I get it. Seven rings is greater than six rings. Football is a more physically grueling sport, even though the rules have neutered defenses and basically turned quarterbacks into gym mint sports cards that can never be touched. Brady was great for a longer period of time, and Tampa Brady was way more successful than Wizards MJ. I would never have entertained the argument if Brady had not won last year, but at least now I'm willing to listen. At the end of the day, I still think anybody who picks Brady over MJ is wrong because of all the reasons MJ fans use to taunt LeBron fans. But unlike the insufferable Jordan defense force, it's not going to ruin my life if, say, Brady had won all of the 10 Super Bowls he was in and removed all doubt. It's a real debate now. 
get used to it. But one part of the GOAT argument that Brady will never win over Jordan is cultural relevance. It's part of the era that MJ played in and when he rolled the wave of Magic and Larry and took the NBA to unprecedented heights. Basketball being a more popular sport on a global scale and of course, the Air Jordans, which we'll talk about in a sec. Brady is no doubt popular to American football fans around the world, but whether it's a joke or you actually break down the social media metrics, Brady has a lot of catching up to do to even match the numbers his supermodel and business mogul wife Giselle brings to the table. And Giselle has a lot of catching up to do before she can match MJ. Nobody's doing a last dance doc about her and I honestly can't tell you if Brady's much hyped man in the arena doc is already out. So about Brady's footwear. It's wild to me that despite his enormous reach, we don't have a single pair of cleats or sneakers that we can hold up and say, yeah, those are Tom Brady's. Like if we had to power rank Brady's top sneaker moments, I can only think of a few of them. Like number three, the time he pulled a Justin Timberlake, Salehi Bimberry and hid signed Uggs throughout Boston. They were so coveted that one fan lost a tooth while sprinting to find them. Sure, Brady made up for it by sending the fan his own signed pair, but the underrated part of the story is that Tom took the time to set up a Gmail account just so the fan could contact him. Tom's a dork in the best way, man. And then number two is when he tried to help out fellow Under Armour superstar Steph Curry and rock the infamous Chef Curry's. Man, remember the internet roasting Steph? Ah. Uh, the good old days when the jokes were mostly harmless except for Under Armour stock prices. Brady posted a pic of himself wearing the shoes and calling them, quote, straight fire, end quote. Why do I get the feeling Giselle had to explain to him what straight fire means though? Hmm. And then number one, that one picture where he's wearing the Air Jordan 23. That's all you really need to know, right? MJ ain't wearing Uggs. Fun fact though, I actually Googled Michael Jordan wearing Uggs and one of the first results is a bootleg pair of sixes with the fuzzy collar. Look it up. I thought it was kind of funny at first. Then I remember the Air Jordan 6 Golden Harvest, which are basically sixes that look like Uggs without the fuzzy collar. Ah, maybe Tom is the goat after all. All right. Let's go to the heat check where we bring you everything that's dropping this week. It's a busy week as we lead up to NBA All-Star Weekend and we haven't really heard much about the shoes that will be in the game besides the bronze Valentine's Day 19s, which would drop past Valentine's Day. Okay, anyway, we have the Nike Dunk Low Valentine's Day on the 14th. We have the Air Jordan 1 High Marina Blue on the 16th for 170. The Nike Dunk Low Sempre Familia on the 17th for 120. The Adidas Yeezy 350 V2 Compact and Slate Red that's gonna be on the 17th for 230. The Reebok Question Mid 25th Anniversary that's on the 17th for 160. The Rick and Morty Puma MB01 on the 18th for 135. There's also a gray and orange version dropping on that same day. We have the Nike Dunk Low Midas Gold on the 18th for $100. The Serena Williams Nike Air Force One on the 18th for 130 the Adidas Yeezy Basketball Knit on the 18th for $300, and the Air Jordan 3 Cardinal Red on the 19th for $200. As for the pick of the week, the Nike LeBron 9 Big Main on the 18th, and the Adidas St. Vincent St. Mary LeBron PE Pack all dropping on the 17th. We're going back in time with the four pack of LeBron sneakers from two competing brands. How's that for forbidden door, eh? First up is the Big Bang LeBron 9 Retro that might be the last great transcendent LeBron All-Star Game sneaker. People forget, but the hype for these was real in 2012. And then we have Adidas digging into their archives and bringing back the player exclusives that James wore in his high school days. The young early 2000s version of me really loved those green and gold pro models like every other hooper back then. But I think those T-Mac 1s and 2s will end up being the more popular of the bunch. And now for a heat check on, actually, you know what? Let's roll it all over to this week's hard pass because I got some things to say about the lack of sneaker heat on the court for this year's All-Star festivities. So this is hard pass where we took a look at something in the culture that just needs to go. Like this year's NBA All-Star Weekend sneakers. By the time this goes live, we'll be less than a week from the league's signature exhibition that will also double as its 75th anniversary celebration as well. And if you follow any of the official NBA accounts on social, you know they've been going hard with all sorts of nostalgic posts about the players that are on the 75 greatest players list. And they've been posting plenty of behind the scenes clips from when the league turned 50 in 1997. Wait, you we, you we know he don't pass. pass. You, you up there in New York, you see him? Charles he's the only one guy I know can be double and triple team and still think he's open. Man, seeing all of those greats together and knowing we'll see our legends with today's stars like LeBron, KD, Steph Curry, and Giannis is gonna be cool. But at the same time, it's also gonna be bittersweet because we won't have those moments with the late Kobe Bryant. <sighs> Anyways, back to something a little lighter, the sneakers. Like I mentioned earlier in the heat check, what do we have to look forward to in the game itself? 
The All-Star Game used to be the Super Bowl of sneakers. Going back to 97 as an example, let's look at the star power that was on display on the court that whole weekend. And no, I'm not talking about the players. I'm talking about the Nike Air Penny 2, the Adidas EQT Elevation, the Nike Air Pippin 1, the Fila GH3, the Reebok Question, the John Wallace Carl Canals, the Glenn Rice WBs. Okay, maybe those last two don't stand the test of time, but man, Carl Canals having sneakers was a trip. And Glenn freaking Rice won the All-Star MVP in some random Warner Brothers sneakers that are so obtuse I'm surprised Balenciaga hasn't ripped them off yet and then there was the one shoe that will be called the Air Jordan 12 playoffs aka co-writer's favorite Air Jordan ever like ever ever if you don't get a pair of the retro dropping in a few weeks blame his ass he probably programmed his own bots to make sure he gets a dozen of them. He'll cash out at a Nike store for real if he sees them on shelves. So sure, 97 is a step below the fireworks show that was the sneakers of 1996's All-Star Weekend, but we still remember the hits to this day. Sneakerheads used to look forward to All-Star because it was where we got to see the kicks that we will be talking about for the next year. Here's just a few memories off the top of Co-Rider's head as he was writing this bit. In 1998, we got Kobe rocking his Adidas KB1 while posting up Michael Jordan and his Air Jordan 13s. Vince Carter wowed the crowd in the 2000 dunk contest in and one Tai Chi's. A few years later, Tracy McGrady popularized mismatching sneakers with his Adidas T-Mac 3s. Shaq taped a Nokia candy bar phone to his size 23s and went viral before that was a thing, and yes, it actually worked. Blake Griffin? He jumped over a Kia in Hyperdunks. Mamba would take home MVP honors in 2011, rocking everybody's favorite today, the Kobe 6. Since NJ used All-Star Weekend to debut the next Air Jordan in the early 90s, you can probably name at least one memorable sneaker moment from each All-Star Weekend right up to the early 2010s. Now flash forward to 2022. What sneakers during All-Star Weekend are you looking forward to? In the heat check, it was Jordan Retros, Dunks, and Yeezys. Our pick of the week was four LeBron Retros. That's a bummer, man. Like, yes, it's cool we're getting these old LeBron kicks, but I wanted to be pumped for the new stuff. If Hard Pass was around back in 2012, we would have made the KD4 Galaxy our pick of the week along with the Kobe 7 All-Star and the LeBron 9 Big Bang instead of the White Cement 4 Retro and Galaxy Foams. All-Star was special. It used to mean something, man. Instead, All-Star 2022 feels like a busy sneaker release weekend just for the sake of being busy. Like, thank goodness LaMelo became an all-star alternate so his Puma MB-01 can change things up. So what has happened since 2012? It started to shift away and more towards lifestyle sneakers that were wore off the court. We cared less about what Nike's LeBron or Kobe or Kyrie or KD was wearing for the big game and more about Cortez Kinney's or the Kobe 1 Undefeated collab that Giannis stealthily debuted at an event in LA in 2018. Speaking of 2018 in LA, Adidas took over an entire block downtown and turned it into a theme park with all sorts of activations and events where you could buy NMDs and Ultra Boots and maybe spot Kanye West walking around when he was still named Kanye West. Could you also buy Damian Lillard's All-Star Drop that weekend? Sure, but if you ask people why those kicks are memorable, it ain't because Dame wore them on Sunday. Nah, it's because it's got the Bathing Ape cosign. If you ask me what were the most memorable All-Star sneaker moments after 2012, it just doesn't conjure up the same feelings as the 90s and 2000s. Like, Kawhi Leonard made history with his jump to New Balance a few years back. Uh, LeBron got us ready for a Space Jam, a new legacy with his Mr. Swackhammer LeBron 17s. And Brandon Ingram got his Yeezy signed by Ye before the game. Wait, that was all from the 2020 game. Okay, that was an outlier. But the point stands. The past 10 years in sneaker culture have not been defined by what was actually new, but what was old and how they could make it new. Brands need to step up. And there are times I feel like that's asking too much. Maybe I'm a little too harsh and my opinion will change as more time passes, but damn. 2022's all-star sneaker lineup, whatever it is, has a lot of catching up to do if it wants to be in the same conversation as 97 or 2007 or even 2017 if we're being honest. So what do you think of this year's all-star sneaker releases? Are you pumped or not? Let me know down in the comments below. And that's gonna do it for the show today. I wanna say thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade. I'll see you next week, but not before I show you my dad's mom's grandson attempting to go viral. Also, don't forget if you wanna leave your own listener Hard Pass, call us at 818-493-9325. Leave a short message, your socials if you want, no more than 30 seconds, and you might be featured in a future episode. I'll see you next week.
Peace. Also, we're recording this in the uh, Harden-Simmons trade is about to go down, so we'll talk about it next week. Maybe. I don't know. I'm out.